Carmen, it's a pleasure to meet you and have you here. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to, to talk to me. Absolutely, I'm glad to be here. So how long have you been working here? I've been with John Knox for about five and a half years. Oh, congratulations. Thank and you. and uh, when, how long have you been in food and beverage? I've been in food and beverage essentially my entire working career. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going on 20, 25 years. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Where did you start? I started in fast food when yeah. I was a teenager. What I were you did. Doing? I did. I worked at Subway. Yeah. I was a sandwich artist. A sandwich uh, artist. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. So from there, I you know I I just enjoyed what I did, um, and then I actually got on at a senior living community um, as a server there wow. part time while I was going to school, um, and just absolutely loved it. So so you're at Subway when you were in high school. Yes. And then you then you went to college. Yes. Right. And what were you studying there? I just my associate's degree, so just general gen Just classes. general general. Yep. Interesting. Okay. And so, and then you started working as a server in a senior living community. I did. Great. And how big a place was that? What was that like? It was uh, pretty good size. It was an independent living community. Mm -hmm. um, also had uh, assisted living on the third floor. Right. Um, and I think, if I can remember correctly, we had about approximately 200 residents between oh, the two, between nice. independent living and, and the right. assisted living. It's a nice size operation. Yeah, absolutely. Great. And so when you graduated uh, from college, what, what did you do? Just continue working there or what was your plan? I did. I continued working there. I, like I said, I started as a server. Mm -hmm. So the opportunity came up to move to the back and a prep cook position became available. Um, so I, I jumped on that, mm -hmm. did that for, for a while and I just moved through the ranks there. Essentially when, when I left there, I was the, the executive chef. No kidding. Yep. Good I, for you. I was there for about six years. All so, on the job training. All on the job. Wow, that's fantastic. Good for you. Thank you. What What did you do to train or learn more about that particular position? Just anything and everything I could. I, I remember I took on a lot of extra responsibilities, um, you know, necessarily that weren't in my, my job description. Right. Just so I could get the exposure, um, any training opportunities that presented themselves, anything like that. Nice. Um, I know as being when I started as a prep cook, you know, I would shadow the cooks a lot in, in any extra time that I had, how right. they were doing things, how their shifts went. I remember when um, I was promoted to, to cook and then to lead cook to move on to executive chef, I was taking over. Um, I started with the bread order, mm -hmm. then moved on to the produce order and moved up to the bigger order, Cisco, things like that. So just anything I could try to take on to give me that experience to make me more qualified for more opportunities. Wow. So obviously you are attracted to, you enjoy that atmosphere, you enjoy that aspect of the business. Absolutely. Um, I, it's just incredible, you know, the bonds that you build with your coworkers because you work in such a small area. Right. One thing about senior living specifically that, that I think drew me in and kept me there is just the relationships you can build with the residents. Right. Um, it's. You know, we, we used to refer to it as a second paycheck, not of monetary value, but oh, just knowing nice. that you leave at the end of the day and that you've provided a service to somebody who genuinely right. needs it, um, you know, and putting your heart and passion into it to make it the best for them that you can. Right. A little different than just the transactional aspect of, of making a sandwich for somebody at, at Subway, you yeah, know. For That's sure. That's great. God, good for you. you. You have a good heart. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> is that something you think you got from your family or is just something that you... I mean, how, how did you, I mean, that, that's, that's pretty admirable what you've done, so. Yeah, I think so. Um, my mother's a nurse, ah. um, so she's been in, you know, the healthcare industry. But I think, like I said, I didn't necessarily see my career going in that direction. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes things just happen and you take advantage of those. But, and like I said, I think getting that opportunity to come in as a server and have that time with the residents and, and just build those bonds. And I mean, it's. You're it's hooked. What's, yep, it's what's kept me in the healthcare industry. That's awesome. Service. Good for you. Yeah. So, so you became the executive chef, and and you were at that place for for how long? About six years. Six years. And so, what did you do at that point? I ended up leaving that that community, <clears throat> um, and I transitioned over, still in healthcare, but to a uh, local hospital. Oh yeah. Um, so got some got some more experience there. I felt it was a good opportunity uh, to kind of expand a little bit more mm -hmm. on specialized diets, sure. things like that. 
you know, with being an independent living, mm -hmm. we don't we don't really you know do the specialized diets. Right. Um, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity to just get some more knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I went to a local one of our local hospitals and worked good there for, you. for about four years. Back of the house, I mean, in the back kitchen. Back of the house, yep. Mm -hmm. Back of the house still, it was a it was a supervisor position there as well. Mm -hmm. Just kind of um, supervising tray line service. They had turned that into room service. Yes. Um, so, you know, have, most hospitals, I assume, have, have kind of transitioned that way. A lot of them have, yes. So, um, you know, I, I got to assist with, with implementing that. Um, nice. The choices on the menu and, you know, gave me good exposure working with dietitians and just, yes. you know, since essentially all my trainings come from on the job, like I said, I just try to look for any opportunity that will help to expand. You know, th this is the one industry, uh, food and beverage as a whole, that people really need to understand. I mean, you don't necessarily have to go to college to learn this. And if, like yourself, where you're curious yeah. and you ask all the right questions and you keep pushing yourself, you really can be quite proficient and, and professional in this business without Absolutely. necessarily having a college degree in that. Absolutely, it's in, it's incredible. I, all the opportunities. Again, I think a lot of that comes from personal drive, you know, yes. and wanting to do it. But it definitely is an industry that you don't necessarily have to. You you can get a right. lot of on-the-job training. You know, what, one of the the goals of the Pineapple Academy was the fact is to demonstrate and show that you know you don't have to necessarily go to college to have a, a career in front of you. And to me, healthcare and senior living communities can provide that uh, for, for a lifetime of, of, of fulfilling work. Absolutely. That's awesome. So <clears throat> how did you transition from back of the house to, because obviously you were in the hospital for a few years, which, yes. which is awesome. Um, and how did you move into a management position? So an opportunity presented itself uh, for a position that I applied for and received at a, another local community. It was assisted living memory care community okay. um, to be their culinary director. Nice. So that I took that opportunity, yeah. that position, um, and that that was really when I started kind of honing in on front of the house. Yeah. Things. Um, it, it was a smaller community uh, between the assisted living and memory care side. We had about 80 residents. Okay. Um, so I felt it was, you know, a good number that I could. You could, you could manage it, handle, get your arms around it. And, correct. And, right, and still kind of learn and grow and, right. and get that experience. So I, uh, I took over that, and that's, you know, great opportunity for me to really, I had some great back-of-the-house staff there, some long tenure there. Yeah. Um, so it, it really helped to know that I could focus a little bit more of my time in the front of the house. And, nice. And really, you know, understand that and, and get more knowledge. And then they probably understood that you'd been in the back of the house for 10 years. So it's not like you, yeah. are, you know, a rookie in the back. Right. So they, right. they probably got that. Absolutely. <laughs> it's always, it, it's a lot of kitchens uh, need to know that the F&B person definitely knows their way around a kitchen too. For sure. For yeah. sure. It's, nice. it's very important for me to know what everybody's doing, how, how they're doing what they're doing, mm -hmm. why they're doing what they're doing, mm -hmm. um, getting their feedback, you know, all those things so I can be right alongside them. Um, it helps me to better guide any you know, processes or policies or procedures we put into place, things like that. Right, right. Or correct one that, that is outdated and 100%. is not needed anymore. Right. You know, sure. I think that's one of the things that, that you know, I, I get a big kick out of, you know, going into hospitals and senior living communities and you see a process has been in place for so long that nobody even questions it anymore. Right. And suddenly you just ask the most innocent question and suddenly it's like it opens up a box and it's like, you don't need to do that anymore. Or by the way, here's a much easier, faster, quicker, smarter way to do it. And uh, we just saved you a whole bunch of time and for sure. aggravation. Yes, I did. So when I left being the culinary director at my last mm -hmm. community, I applied um, and received the position here. Nice. And when I got here, Courtyard did already actually exist yep. um, on a much smaller scale. They were building our new restaurant at right. that time. And uh, so I, another great learning opportunity, actually an incredible opportunity uh, to be a part of the team here. Um, it was almost as if I got to open my own restaurant. You right. Know? And so I really got exposure to creating menus from start, um, bringing in, a, you know, a, essentially my entire staff. Wow. New, 
um, everything, down to the small wares, you know, all those things. That's awesome. At sections in the dining room, well, how we're gonna do things, all of that. So, and I, I did that for about the first, almost first full year that I was here mm -hmm. until the restaurant was op you know, ready to wow, be open. Wow, what and, a and great that. experience that was. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, it, it, it really shows because we had lunch there the other day and it was fantastic. Well, so thank it's you. a beautiful place. So thank very you. nice. Who are the influences and are, are there other, you know, like professional people that you've met that kind of like kind of open your eyes to other things? Like who who's out there? Who stands out in your mind? So I, I the director, the food and beverage director at the community where I became the executive chef. Mm -hmm is I owe an abundance to him. Mm -hmm. uh, he really took me under his wing, showed me a lot of things, um, knife skills, all mm -hmm. those things, mm -hmm. um, and, and taught me all those things that I know now. I think that's a, that was a huge support for me right. in helping me grow. Um, I also worked with a dietitian um, mm -hmm. that, uh, while we didn't necessarily work together very often, our time spent together was very was invaluable to me. Um, just for a lot of different reasons. Right. She, she really helped to support and help me grow. Mm -hmm. um, but mo most, I'll save the best for last, most importantly, my current boss is mm -hmm. incredible. Nice. Just the most amazing person I've ever worked for. Right. Um, really tries to empower us, is a great support. Right. Um, looks for any and, any and every opportunity to learn, continue your knowledge, opportunities to grow mm -hmm. all of those things when you take a look at you know these people that touched you and, and and you learned a lot from explain how that relationship came to be and what you think your role in the, in creating that relationship is as well as their attitude because i do think that people have to understand that it's a two-way street being open and willing, mm -hmm. um, me having the passion and the drive, asking the question. And you recognize and saw that. Yeah, mm -hmm. Be being being able to um, approach them and have the conversations, mm -hmm. see see what opportunities, building those relationships, just working together. Communication's huge. Right. Letting them know, hey, I'm interested in this. If, right. if an opportunity should present itself, or uh, you know, overhearing or overseeing things, opportunities that are available right. to say, could I? potentially you know take that on um, sure. or participate um, then following up making sure you know that I'm, mm -hmm. I'm notified of any opportunities things like mm -hmm. that I, but it's absolutely a two-way street and I really think that it's all about the approach and, right and and how I mean I think sometimes a lot of a lot of times individuals don't necessarily open themselves up and yes. say I want to learn these things or, yes. or I want to know these things and you know a lot of the times people aren't mind readers they can't tell if this there you is go. really an area that you're passionate That's about right. and you're wanting that opportunity right um, so I, again it really all boils back down to communication and I think I think the other thing that, that you, you kind of have to be honest with yourself also uh, in terms of what you know and don't know and be able to recognize that but also realize that you have to do the job you've been assigned to first and master that. Um, I see a lot of people come through operations, oh, I want to be this, uh, and so they just think, I'm going to go do that, and yet you're hired to do a certain job, and you have to respect that, and you get to master that. Yes. Because it really is a building block situation in this business. It really is, and if you don't master an area, and let's say your ultimate goal is to be in management or to right. be that director, it's not going to you know, be very be very beneficial right. for you to continue on and, right. and not know how to work those positions. That's exactly understand. right. I yeah. mean, that's exactly right. You have to have the patience and understanding to realize that it will get there, but you have to take each step as it comes. Right, absolutely. No, that's awesome. So. Um, in terms of interactions with your staff, like what are the things that you're looking for from your staff? Uh, you know, what what brings you know what kind of get, gets you motivated in the morning to come into work? I look for initiative. Mm -hmm. um, I try to make sure anybody and everybody is aware of any opportunities that should mm -hmm. present themselves. Good point. Anything that and that's anything that we're doing training opportunities right. events anything like that, right? Um, I really think the main thing though 
is again building those relationships and it's important to take the time out to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations mm -hmm. even if it's just a you know a 30 second conversation in the wait station mm -hmm. or you know in, in the in the prep area or something like that but to just build those relationships to build the bonds and the respect and the trust and right. um you know i absolutely just love what i do mm -hmm. i i love the company i work for right um i, I like i in, i've built an amazing team they all come in they're all so passionate about what they what they're doing and nice you know i look for that initiative and and that drive and you know just those good bones of of good quality right people. right i mean we have a, a bit of a saying here, which you may have heard, but um, we hire for attitude and train for skill. You know, we're really just looking for those good individuals that, you know, want to be here for the right reasons and want to do what, what right. we're doing. And, and we will absolutely try to provide them with That's awesome. the skills. And speaking of which, you have a new tool to, to help you with that. I do. We do. So what, what's, what's the Pineapple Academy done for you as a manager? You know, it's nice, as, you know, specifically just this last year, mm -hmm. I feel like there's been s mm. a lot of limited training opportunities, you know, to go and, right. and sit through training or things like that. So to have this tool, I've been um, throughout the career, you know, we've had some online courses and at a lot of places in healthcare, sure. but n nothing that is specific to the hospitality part of it. Right. And it's just been incredible. Uh, it's helped me to brush up on old things. It's mm -hmm. brought some new new ideas and things to light just right. with the management series mm -hmm. and things like that. Nice. Um, you know, and, and I think even with the team, it, it shows that we're investing in them. Right. I like, I really like that the courses can be assigned to anyone. So Mm -hmm. I do a lot of cross training at my nice. restaurant. So I run Courtyard Cafe as well as the coffee shop. So right. it's two outlets, mm -hmm. um, both totally different. Yes. Restaurants full service, coffee shops really grab and go. Mm -hmm. um, but I have a lot of cross training that goes on. And I have a lot of individuals that want to be able to, but don't necessarily feel confident or comfortable. Mm -hmm. And this has been a great opportunity where I can assign you know, back of the house courses to my front of the house staff or my coffee shop staff. Um, it's been able to, it's given me the opportunity to expand what I do at the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. I have baristas that run it down there, so not necessarily a designated cook, mm -hmm. but they do do a lot of cooking down there. Right. So it's been able to allow me to provide them with some additional training mm -hmm. where they can be more confident in preparing things that maybe say a cook would be would be usually come from back of the house or from a cook. Right. Um, so it's it's really helped to make it a lot more fluid for me over in my area specifically. Um, it's been a it's been a great addition. Well, that's me. I'm so glad to hear. And in terms of the for the staff themselves, in terms of the ability to like to move up, do you see that it's creating any sort of a, a tool for them to kind of move up in the organization? I do. I think that you know because. I'm all about promoting from within. Mm -hmm. um, I've I've actually most recently promoted a supervisor from within. I've promoted a senior cook to an assistant kitchen manager position. Nice. Um, and so I think that uh, you know it's absolutely been beneficial um, mm -hmm. for them to see. Hey, these opportunities are out there. So can I get courses along this line? Right. Um, you know. I know a lot of companies may do it. I know we do it. We have a leadership series and things, but mm -hmm. it's nice to know that I can, I'm always looking for more opportunities for them and to be right. able to sit them down and say, okay, here's some of the courses we can offer you right. on this and, and we can you can take those and take them with you um, and continue to grow yeah. is, is amazing. It's has that helped you with any of the recruitment process over the last year? I believe it has. I believe that it shows the team that we want to invest in them mm -hmm. and we want to invest in their future. Granted, you know, we're, we're in the food service and so not everybody ends up staying within that right. food service, but um, I honestly feel a lot, of, a lot of the material you can utilize in almost any industry that you decide sure. to go to. You know, you, you can definitely find ways to, right. to cross-utilize that too, but I feel that they see that we're, we want to take the time to invest in them. Right. And give them those opportunities. Like I said, I've I've had staff move from front of the house to back of the house just within this last year based off of, I feel, a good portion to, due to pineapple. Wow. I think that they were exposed to some things that 
got them excited and as you look towards the future of uh, for more um information and, and more training opportunities within the pineapple academy what what would you like to see us do so the one thing i was thinking um when we were taking it and going through it and talking to, to my my boss about it was other aspects of of that you know the um, housekeeping side of it mm -hmm. or you know the, the maintenance side of it and, mm -hmm. and how some of those things even can relate to food service too. Absolutely. I mean mm -hmm. um, I think that sometimes uh, you know we can get focused on one area you know if, if a company is mm -hmm. doing training it's you know over certain this or that but I think that you know there's just so much more opportunity to add some more great content right um, to just have a better knowledge even if you know within senior living or the healthcare industry, just so even if they you have a better understanding of, of the other departments that you work That's with. That's right. I mean, just any of that. No, I'm just I, kind of a training nut. I well, think. you know, well, no, and, and it's really it sounds like you're a lifelong learner, and that and, you know, at the end of the day, you have to be in this industry because things change. You know, right. different products come out, different equipment, uh, pandemics break out and change, shake things up. I mean, things happen. You know, Absolutely. life happens. So. You, you have to stay on top and understand, you know, what's available. And in some cases, uh, it's made, made life a lot easier. You know, technology has really changed our lives when it comes to operations. I mean, yeah. I mean when I was coming up, we didn't have, nearly, didn't have any of those kind of tools uh, available. Yeah. And now today, you know, they're, they're everywhere and, and they can certainly make your life more organized and easier to, to get things done and, and keep going. I yeah. think another good thing about the pineapple uh, training has been the shorter clips. Yes. Being in there, doing the, the tasks that need yep. to be done. You know, a lot of times online training will be uh, an audio voice with a picture or right. you know, some PowerPoint, bullet points, right. a PowerPoint, things like that. And I think it's huge that you actually get to see a real person doing real tasks that you're performing right. with similar equipment, you know, the same equipment right. and similar atmosphere. And I just feel like it, it you're better, you're easier to connect. More to relatable. Say, Absolutely. Well, this has been a pleasure talking to you, Carmen. I really appreciate your time today thank and uh, thank you for everything you're doing. Mm -hmm.